Hey everyone, I'm Kel and welcome to our very first Magic the Gathering deck in a box video. This is a series that I do with other card games where I open up an entire box of cards and build a deck with only the cards found inside. I think this is a really fun thing you can do if you're a new player trying to, you know, start playing a game, trying to build your very first deck. It's a very fun deck building challenge. And it's also just something fun you can do with your booster box. Think of this kind of like a box sealed. Without further ado, let's crack into this. Do I have a box cutter around here? Ikoria is a pretty unique set in that it has a box topper, which as of now is pretty uncommon for Magic the Gathering um, booster draft sets or draft packs or draft boxes or whatever the hell they're calling these these days. We are going to include the box topper in our kind of pool. And so if it's cool, then we will play with it. Hopefully it is cool. We'll probably open up that one first. So let's crack this open, pop it up display style, just kind of so it looks nice sitting over here. Here we have our glorious Ikoria booster packs. And let's see what the box topper says. Um, or what it is, rather. Seal product, not for resale. I'd be willing to bet there are many of these re reselling on eBay right now. Uh, let's see what we got here. It's kind of a little pain to get. This should be an alternate art Godzilla-themed box topper. So full, full extended art and also foil. We have <laughs> Space Godzilla, the death, um, the death uh, COVID-19. I think this is a pretty good one, and by pretty good one, I mean I think it's worth some money right now because it's like um, all future versions of this card are going to have the, the Corona part changed. Very interesting. I'm probably going to be looking to sell this thing because I'm not really sure if I want to keep it for like collecting purposes. It's just a weird, weird card. Anyway, let's start opening these up. Um, the last box that I opened, opened up off screen just, just for my own personal enjoyment. Um, the, the packs are reversed, so the rares are going to be first, basically, instead of at the end. So we have a Soldier Token. We're not going to be really paying a lot of attention to some of these. Soldier Token, Planes. Oh, dude, starting it off with a alternate art mythic, uh, Nethroi Apex of Death. Okay, it's going to be really hard to get me away from playing these colors because I think this card is very sweet. Um, this does take the slot of our rare, so you don't get it in addition to the... To the rare. So yeah, Nethroi Apex of Death. Putting that bad boy down there. Yeah, definitely gonna want to play those. We've got a Polywog Symbiote, Zenith Flare, a Lore Dracus, and then let's just quickly go over the commons. I'm not gonna go over them all in detail, otherwise this video is gonna take a very long time, but I'm, I'm gonna go over them pretty quickly and try to find a place to put these off screen. And then basically what I will do is at the, um, at the very end, I will kind of just quickly go over them and assess what cards that I want to put in the deck. We will cover the rares and the mythics and maybe some of the uncommons. Stuff that kind of pulls us into building a particular type of deck. Um, but for the commons, we're not really going to do that. So we have a Dranith Magistrate um, as a rare. Not super exciting in my opinion. We have Weaponize the Monsters. Necropanther. Really like this card. It could be good in this uh, Nethroi style deck. Another Zenith Flare, and then let's go through the commons real quick because we do want to see if we get any of those sweet alternate comic book style art. <laughs> eye of, uh, got the Eye of Sauron there. Let's see what our next pack is going to be. Pretty, pretty good box, you know, right off the bat. The first one that I opened up, you know, like I said, in my own personal time, um, had, yo, Foil Emergent Ultimatum. Really sweet. I was going to say the other box that I had had six of the bicycle lands, six of the, the tri lands. Pretty sweet. This one lets you search your deck for up to three mono colored cards with different names. Exile, an opponent chooses one of those cards. Shuffle that card into your library. You may cast the others without paying their mana costs. You know, I'm still, I still rather play the Nethroi here, but still pretty cool. Oh, dude, double ultimatum pack with the inspired ultimatum. Totally won a, um, like had a hot streak on Magic Arena with this card. Doesn't look as good as it actually is. If you can play this, it's a big game. So we have um, the Indotha Crystal. Yeah, could be fixing for our Nethroi deck. We have this Mamba. Boneyard Lurker, another good card for our Nethroi deck. And let's kind of flip through here. Ooh, we got one of the um, Alt Art Cloud Piercers. Very cool. I'm gonna put all the Alt Arts up here. And I'm gonna put just the rares here. And then all the Mythics are gonna go here. 
I think that's the way we're gonna boil it down. I guess we can put uh, Space Godzilla in the alt art camp currently. Kind of trying to sort my off-screen cards because we're gonna have some big piles. This is just a tip card. Anytime I see one of these like, you know, nothing cards, not even a token, I'd like to see, come on, if it still has like the blue core. It does. It does still have the blue core. We have um, Mountain. Ooh, I can see another one of these um, alt art cards. It looks like it's gonna be a land. Yo, Savai Triome. Foil, alt art, tr tricycle land. I was gonna call it bicycle land. Very cool. The other one that I got was the Sultai one. I don't remember. Zagoth or something like that. Very cool. Very good, good fixing. Yo! And we got uh, we got the ultimatum for the, the for the land. Nice. This is a pretty heavy ultimatum box. We have a Mystic Subduel. It's just kind of like a creature removal kind of deal. Nourishing Fox, Cycling Matters card. Glowstone Recluse, Mutate Matters card. That could be useful for the uh, Nathroi deck that we kind of want to build here. Um, and we are going to be building a 60 card deck. Not just like a 40 card deck, because we're using an entire box of cards. Um, so you want to have like a large pool. Yo, Kraken token. Pretty sweet looking token there. Cool looking island. Well, another foil rare, Extinction Event. Choose otter even, exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, we could definitely use that. Hunted Nightmare. I think this card's actually pretty cool. It's a three drop with Menace 4-5. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they control. You know what? If they don't have a creature, you just get a 4-5 Menace for three. You can drop this off a Dark Ritual in like older formats. Eh, like more casual stuff, but I think it's pretty cool. Leave the Stampede isn't too bad. Neutralize is a decent counter. Back for more could be pretty cool too. It says return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights up another fights another creature you control. Fights up another creature. Ram through. Good green removal. Yeah, I think we're um, I think we're in a good position to build a pretty sweet like Abzan style deck. Not gonna lie, I was trying to remember what what it was called. Those that color combination. Narset of the Ancient Way. Like a little token thing. We have a Wind Scarred Crag. A pretty good fixing for the deck, honestly. We have a Gyruda, Doom of Depths. I'm not really going to be trying to focus on a companion unless we can really make it work. Um, eh, maybe Gyruda. Maybe not. Or we can just put him in our deck, too. We can just play him for uh, Black Black. That's not too bad. Another Lead the Stampede. Polywog, Symbiote. Clash of Titans. And then we have the Almighty Brushwag. Once again, flip through the commons. Very quickly. I don't put this down here where the mythics are, but I'm gonna put all of the rare alt arts in addition to the mythics down there. They are just that spicy. Especially like the triome. I okay, I will say I got a foil triome in the other box, a foil alt art triome, and I got a regular alt art triome, and then four like just regular triomes, and one of them was also foil. We have Gen or Gen Gigantha, the Wellspring. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool partner card. We have Keen Sight Mentor, Rogrin Crystal, Proud Wild Bonder. I think the only one of the tri lands that I did not get was the the Jeskai colored one. Ooh, Migratory Great Horn. I think this card's actually gonna be really good for our deck. I really like the mutate mechanic. I think it's a lot of fun, um, and I think we could do some good work with that in our particular deck. We have a Song of Creation, really sweet, um, really sweet card. I don't think we're going to be playing it in our deck, though, because it costs one green, blue, red. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards, but at the end of your turn, you have to discard your hand. Kind of rough, but I think that card is quite good. Easy prey. That is probably an easy pick for the deck. Rogan Crystal, Dire Tactics. Exile creature, if you don't control a human, lose life. Yeah, we'll probably use that, too. I think it card's... Premium removal. Pretty pretty good. Another migratory great horn. Yeah. I mean, I'm still kind of on the Nithroi train. I think we can make a really sweet, like, monster style deck. We have an Island, a migration path. Eh, kind of a okay, like, uh, ramp type card. I'm putting on normal foils. It's the first, like, regular foil I've gotten. Uh, let's scoot some stuff. Put it, like, Put it like right there. We have another extinction event. It's our second one. Not too bad. 
Probably play with that. Call of the Death Dweller. Not too bad. Also, Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. Cunning Nightbonder. Love the art on this card. I love this, like, weird, like, four-eyed, bloodborne ghost dog thing. I think it looks really cool. Let's see if we have any other, like, sweet alt art cards. I was kind of, like, pretty low on Ikoria at the start. And then as it started to, like, you know, uh, previews happened and cards got shown, I was like, you know what? I think this looks sweet. Uh, Thornwood Falls. We have a Gem Razor. It's going to be a slam dunk for our deck. I think it's a pretty good one. When it mutates, you destroy an artifact or enchantment opponent controls. And it's also a 4-4 Reach Trample for 4. Only mutates for 3. I think it's pretty good. We have a Titanoth Rex. It's, this could make the deck. You know, it has cycling. It's a, it's a big boy, but it also just has cycling, too. We have an Avian Oddity. Just a bunch of wings. Ooh. Auspicious Starix. Or Starix? Yeah, that's, that'll probably also make the cut. Yeah. I, I dig it. I dig it a lot. Yo. Seven Cannon artwork on the Essence Scatter is excellent, as I'm sure everyone has already pointed out. I will note that I also got a pack that had a rare alt art, uncommon alt art, and a common alt art. So it looks like you can get one for each type of rarity in a pack. We have a Regal Leosar. It's a... Dinosaur cat probably not gonna make it into our deck, but still pretty cool. Yo, we got the little otter also probably not gonna make it into our deck But still pretty cool. We can we could probably do the companion thing for this We have an ivy elemental that if we do what we're doing ivy elemental will definitely make it in sanctuary lockdown Not really looking like we're gonna be doing a human thing Insatiable hemophage this one could make it into our deck. Yeah We have a spring draw trap yeah, some pretty good removal here, like this arrow. People seem to be like undervaluing that divine arrow in um, in a draft, in my opinion. I end up with like four or five of them, and it just like wrecks. Mythos of Luna, pretty cool card, but probably not in our wheelhouse. Horn Bash Mentor, definitely in our wheelhouse. I think it's pretty sweet. Oh, cool. So we have the the one for Trample, pumps up all your dudes with Trample, and then the one for Life Link, pumps up all your dudes with Life Link. Pretty cool. And then we have a Vigilance uh, Mutate Dude. Yo, these, these are actually all really good. These could all make it into our deck. Definitely. We have a Bristling Boar. And nothing nothing much else. That's that Scorpion that uh, definitely does not have Death Touch. Got another Human Soldier. Bloodfell Caves. Pretty good fixing, but not for us. Mythos of Brokos. Also, not really for us, but... Yeah. Could be interesting. Just, just returning to... Two permanents from our graveyard. Could be could be useful. We have a Momentum Rumbler, Jubilant Skybonder. We have a Frill Scar Scare Mentor. Yeah, not too much for our deck now, though we should still keep you know our mind open to other possibilities if we get some sweet, like other bomb mythics. For this, you can probably make just a decent deck out of like a decent power level of cards, but we wanna make something cool. Like we wanna make something sweet. If you are a new player, you're gonna see this freaking dude. You're gonna see this and you're like, oh, I wanna play with that. And that's kind of like the point of this video. That's what we're gonna be doing. Anyway, we have this Cub Warden. Could, yeah, definitely make it into the deck. Pretty good rare. We have a Swallow Hole. Very interesting card. Rooting Moloch. Yo, Boneyard Lurker, alt art. I think this card's really, really good. It's definitely be really good in our Nithroi deck. We have Unlikely Aid. Adventurous Impulse could be useful. Oh, dude. Last card of the pack. Alt Art Cavern Whisperer. Yeah, that could also make the cut. You know, if you're a new player too, you're probably going to want to play with like all of the sweet Alt Art cards. You're going to see them and you're going to be like, yo, this is sweet. Why are I not playing with these cool cards? Hey, check it out. We got a Luka. Copper Coat Outcast. Very nice. I got an alt art one of these in uh, another box that I opened. Yeah, he's actually really good. Definitely worth considering, uh, even though we're not... T technically, we're not playing red right now, though. Can maybe <laughs> splash for a double red. He's a uh, Planeswalker, five, a drop, three of any, double red. Luka has five loyalty, plus one, exile the top three cards of your library. Creature cards exile this way, gain. You may cast this card from exile as long as you control a Luka Planeswalker. So kind of like a draw three, but not really. Um, you can pay 
minus two, exile, target creature card you control, then reveal cards from the top of your deck until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost, put it into the battlefield, and the rest on the bottom. Yeah, that's really sweet, actually. And it says, each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent for a minus seven. Pretty good card. Pretty good card, honestly. Ooh, another uh, migration path ramp card. Could definitely make the cut. Primal Empathy. Yo! An alt art real Le regal Leosaur to go with our uh, the foil one over there. Yo, this is a, this is a Luca pack. This is definitely a Luca pack here. I'm gonna adjust my headset because I can hear it rumbling a little bit. Not too bad so far. Not too bad. If I'm gonna get another Planeswalker, I'm I'm gonna want Vivian. I mean, she's one of the best cards in the set, but I think she'd be really good for this deck too. Offspring's Revenge. I think this card is really cool on multiple levels. It's a five drop enchantment, two of any, and then um, Mardu colors, red, white, black. At the beginning of combat on your turn, exile. Ex but first of all, at the beginning of combat on your turn, exile target red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a one one. It gains haste. You just get it. So you just get a dude every single turn, which is pretty cool. It's a tiny, tiny dude, but still pretty good. Um, I should note that this will probably also make the cut as well. Stormwild uh, Cap Rider. I think it's a really good card to mutate onto. We have a Charge of the Forever Beast and a Grim Dancer. Those are all cards that I think could make the deck. Let's see if we can find another. Nope. No last pick alt art cards. Still have a lot of room for sweetness here. Ooh, we got one of these uh, token, token counters. We have an Island. Eerie Ultimatum. Yo, this one definitely could make the deck. This one, it says, return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield for uh, white, white, black, 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 green, green. Yeah, really sweet. Ooh, another, another Stormwild Cap Raider. A Reptilian Reflection. This card uh, beat me to death in draft last night. Proud Wild Bonder. Yeah, could be, could be an interesting card. And then let's see if we have any other ones. We could possibly run this egg too, by the way, that we keep seeing because it's just, you know, colorless, and we're definitely gonna want to do like a bunch of mutate shenanigans. I think we can make a really cool mutate deck. Jungle Hollow, will definitely make the cut. Foil, Blazing Volley, really nice looking, but not gonna, not gonna make it really. Shark Typhoon, we got a Sharknado. This card's really sweet. Probably not gonna make the cut, but if we wanna play blue, we'll probably run the Sharknado. Sanctuary Lockdown. We have a Majestic Oricorn Heartless Act. Also definitely make the cut. Really sweet card. And then let's see if we have any alt arts. Uh, Farfinder might also make the cut. Little, little cute fox. Looks like my dog. Looks like my little chihuahua. About the same fluffiness too though. My chihuahua is a little bit more of like a... A little more of a deer head. Yo, Luris of the Dream Den. Okay, I'm, I'm all in on... I'm all in on the... Not Sultai. What is it? Abzan. I'm all in on the Abzan now. This is a sweet Abzan box. Lurus of the Dream Den. I don't know if we can get this as a companion, but just in the deck, I think it could be pretty sweet. We have a Ketria Crystal, Unbreakable Bond. They'll probably also make it in the deck. Sonorous Howl Bonder. And then we have, you know, some common cards. Pretty low on the Trilands in this box, act box, actually. The other one, like I said, had six. Yo companion like reminder card this is the first one of these i've seen weird and down the back nah super weird planes we have a foil rugged highlands yo there we go complain about it and get rewarded we have a ketria triome this is the teamer one really sweet i'd like the alt art on that one i'm gonna put all the the lands down here too escape protocol alert heed bonder parcel beast which i think is a pretty good card evolving wilds Definitely could make it into the deck. Wouldn't it be cool if they did some alt art on some other, like, non-mutate cards? Like, um, Evolving Wilds and stuff. Uh, Mountain. Ooh, Foil Anticipate. Yeah, it looks really sweet. We have a Slither Wisp, one of my favorite arts in the whole set. Like I said, I love these, like, many-eyed, snake, dog, bloodborne, monster hunter looking things. Interesting card. It's like a flash tribal card. I don't know. It's interesting. Probably not going to make our deck, but interesting. This one could. Chittering Harvester. Um, when it evolves or when it mutates, uh, each opponent sacks a dude. 
We have another cunning night bonder. Yo, so here we go. Yeah, like, is it the same creature? I don't think it is. It looks like the same creature, though. Kind of cool. I dig it. It's like that, that kind of stuff that makes me really like um, Ikoria, just like as a set. I think this set will basically stand the test of time. I think this is going to be a very nice set going forward. Uh, Yadaro, Wandering Monster. It's Gamera. It's a, it's a pretty good one, actually. Uh, Rooting Moloch. Boon of the Wish Giver. That is my, I think Aluna is the name. It's my favorite of the Apex. Um, Pouncing Shore Shark. Really cool alt art card. Probably not going to make the deck. But if we do blue, we could do it. We've gotten some number of blue cards. No, like, huge blue bombs or anything. We have, like, the Gyruda. Um, we have the Gyruda. Ooh. We have another another card here. Yeah, this is going to be a rare. What's going to be? Everquill Phoenix. I've not seen this one. Pretty sweet. So, so we got a, a normal one. We also have a uh, land as well. Put this one down here. We have Wingspan Mentor, Void Beckoner. I think this one definitely is going to make the cut. Love all the cycling cards. Channeled Force. Use that in a draft deck. It's an interesting card. You really have to play it at the right times. I found myself like having it be useless often. Another one of these. Speaking of useless, we have a Forest. Ooh, the Ozolith. Nice. This card's sweet. Hmm, I don't think we're going to be doing a counter style deck, but it, it could work. This is a card that synergizes with um, creature like counters and like ability counters and all that stuff. Cool card though. Fight is one. I think this card's actually incredibly good. I've been blown out so many times by that. Same with Skull Prophet. Pretty good. Not been blown out, but I think it's a good card. And Huntmaster Liger. These are all like pretty good uncommons for the deck. I like it. I think those could all make the cut. I think we have a, a, a pretty solid deck here. Like, because we have so many, like, really solid uncommons and some pretty decent rares and, like, a couple bombs. I think um, I think our deck can be sweet. Oh, another one! Is this a land? It is a land! It's a, wait, it's the same land. Wait, this happened in the other box. They were both the Zagoth Triome. Crazy! I wonder if that, like, how common is that? Is that happening to everyone else, or did I just get, like, two weird boxes? Yeah, weird. Super weird. Sanctuary Smasher. We got another Horn Bash Mentor. Splendor Mare. This will definitely make, definitely make the cut, too. Really like the cycling cards. Um, probably Greater Sandworm, if I'm being honest, too. Yo! Dreamtail Heron. Alt Art. Yeah, nice. That is super weird that we got the same one, like, twice. Because, like, like I said, the, in the other box that I opened, I got the Zagoth. You know what? Hold on. Before we look at this pack, let me just, like, reach around. Here, I have my case. Or this little this little cube that has all, like, the cool pulls from the last box that I opened. Look. It had the double Zagoth Triome. Yeah. Isn't that bizarre? You know, these are the other other ones that I got, including the, the Luca that I mentioned. But, you know, I digress. It's very interesting that... This happened like twice in a row. That can't be a coincidence. I will note that I did see that these boxes were made by the Japanese printers. I wonder if that has to do with it. So we have a Human Soldier, Scoured Barons, I have a Foil Common Essence Symbiote. Could could make the deck actually. Mythos of Vadrock. Yeah, pretty cool. We have a Zagoth Crystal. Back for more. Once again, probably make the cut. Footfall Crater, and then we have some. Yeah, just some common cards. Still have like a, you know, decent chunk of cards left. Haven't got a lot of mythics. Basically, we've just gotten another companion one. We've just gotten um, Nethroi and Luka. So we can definitely use some more mythics here. Speaking of which, one of the best mythics in the whole set. Keenan, Bonder Prodigy. Um, yeah, people are already like complaining about this in Commander. I don't know if we're going to play this in our deck today. Maybe though. It is, it is definitely a bomb. It's a 2-2 for a green and a blue human druid. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. So it basically adds an additional mana any type you at any time you tap something that's not a land for mana. And then it has this ability for five of any, a green and a blue. Look at the top five cards of your library and put a non-human among them onto the battlefield. And put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Yeah, pretty good. Um, and by pretty good, I mean uh, very good. 
It is a very, very good card. Um, let's see if we got any any other sweetness in this box. I'm already very happy with this box, by the way. We had a really sweet mythic alt art card. We have some of the best mythics in the set. Um, yeah. We could just use some more of the lands. I'd be happy more with more of the lands. We have Night Squad Commando, sweet foiling on that, and a Genesis Ultimatum. Um, look at the top five cards of your library. Put a number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest into your hand. Exile it for, um, what is it, seven total? Three, four, five, six, seven. This is probably going to make it into my, wait, seven? I'll have to see. This might make it into my Maelstrom Wanderer deck. Um, so we have a Void Beckoner. I think we've already got one of these. Pretty good. I'm going to seize Archipelagor. And then we have our common cards. Oh, dude. Another last pick. Cavern Whisperer. Last card, Cavern Whisperer, not last pick. I think we're down to maybe the last seven or eight packs or so. Still heavily leaning towards um, Abzan. Ooh, speaking of which, Death's Oasis. Enchantment for a white, black, green. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, and then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost. Then the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. Sacrifice it, you gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost among creatures you control. Yeah, that card's sweet. We're putting that in our deck. Barrier Breach. Eh, it's a sideboard card. Bastion of Remembrance. Really sweet card. Eh, might, 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 might make the deck. We have a General's Enforcer. This is a, like a human tribal card. Don't really have a lot of human synergy so far. There's a couple things. But we don't have like the General Dranith or whatever the hell his name is. The, the dude with the gnarly, like, mutton chop or mustache. Does he have mutton chops? I don't know. We have the Bonders Enclave. Taps for uh, colorless. Tap three and tap it. Draw a card. Activate this ability only if you control a creature with power of four or greater. Maybe. That's a definite maybe. Will of the All Hunter. More ominous seas. These are very ominous. Lord Dracus. Like the card. Probably will not make the cut because it doesn't fit our colors. And let's check. Nope. Did not get anything sweet. So I think we're down to the six, or am I just counting these wrong? Yeah, last six packs. Only got a couple mythics still. Could use some more mythics. Could use some more lands. Ooh, whirlwind of thought. I think this card's sweet. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card for uh, just sky mana and a colorless. Um, I used this in a uh, a draft deck, and it actually totally like was very good. May pork you parrot. Uh, insatiable hemophage. Once again, that could probably make the cut. I think our deck is going to be a pretty high, like, it's going to have a pretty steep mana curve if I'm looking at these cards right. So we'll have to, we'll have to be very careful. Got to see how many brush wags we got. We have a Umori the Collector. Yeah, pretty sweet companion. Probably not going to be playing this one unless we want to play, like, all creatures. We could maybe do an all creatures one. You know what? We might actually do this. We might go for an all creature Imori deck. That could be very sweet. Ooh. Chittering Harvester. Nightmare Mutate. This is the one that makes uh, your opponent sack dudes. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm doing it. Unless there's other like really sweet like non-creature cards that we want to play. I think we could do like an all creature Umori style deck. I think that could be very cool. We have a Foil Stormwild Cap Rider, Labyrinth Raptor, pretty cool card, very, very interesting one. Duskfang Mentor, this is the one that pumps lifelinkers, Reptilian Reflection, Dire Tactics, really nice to get another one of those. Except it is a uh, non-creature spell, which means that we will not be able to use it um, if we do the um Umori strategy. Hmm, is it worth it? It's probably better to have good removal, honestly. I don't know. I do not know. We should be have we should have some mythics coming up soon. So let's see. We're gonna slow roll some of these. Oh yeah, dude, Luminous Broodmoth. This is an incredible box. We have Keenan, Luca, Luminous Broodmoth. This is one of the best cards in the set. One of the most expensive cards too. It's a 3-4 flying for two of any double white. Whenever creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its control with a flying counter on it. Wow. Yeah, that's that's definitely making the cut. We have a Trumpeting Gnar alt art. Also, Reconnaissance Mission, 
Savai Thundermane. Those aren't making the cut, but the Trumpeting Gnar, very sweet card. Also, probably not making the cut. We are we are sticking with our. I got two more packs actually. We are sticking with our uh, uh, Abzan. I keep forgetting Abzan. Yeah, I keep forgetting that it's called Abzan. I keep wanting to call it Sultai. Definitely not Sultai. Uh, dinosaur. You have a Plains, and then a rare is Yorian Sky Nomad. Pretty cool. Not gonna make the deck. Well, actually, we could. We could just do double white instead. When it is a battlefield exile number, oh, so he, he, he's the flicker one. Eh, maybe. Maybe Valiant Rescuer and Archipelagor Alt Art. Very cool. Flame Spill. And then we have a bunch of comic cards. Ooh, Alt Art Vulpikeet. That could also make the cut. So this is our last pack. This box, so far, we've only gotten three of the tri lands and we've only gotten technically i guess four mythics if we count uh Nethroy over here i would be very happy with a land a rare land or another mythic so we have jungle hollow let's like sl slow roll it here we got a foil land oh, i forgot we didn't even get our foil uh foil basic so there's there's a foil basic and then we have ooh, a mythic five five mythic this is probably one of the um, the apexes. It's another Nathroy. Are you kidding me, dude? Oh, got ch chunky chunky wolf bear, chunky wolf bear, Savai crystal, sprite dragon. Okay, yeah, this box is very much like. Why are you not playing Abzan? Play it, dummy. Like, just play the Abzan. You got two Nathroys. Play them. I think I like this art a little bit better. But the, the altar, it's, it's pretty cool. It's more like horrific looking. Especially with the little skull. Yeah, it's super sweet. We also got like the brood moth. These are some pretty sweet like bomb cards. Though, on the other hand, we did get Keenan, though I don't think Keenan's very good um, without a lot of support. We only got three of the lands. That's uh, half of my other box, but you know, can't complain. The foil land is sweet. I'm very curious if this is like common. All, like among all of the boxes like do, do all the boxes have this I don't know I haven't seen any and then we have a Luca as well also very nice but most of these are not gonna make the cut I mean these two will definitely make the cut because they produce white and black we don't really need the red um, and this is where we're at this is like what we want to be doing so I'm gonna sort all this stuff up I'm gonna build a deck and we're gonna talk about what I built yeah All right, so I've managed to cut it down to, you know, just about 150 cards or something, not including basic lands. Let's cut it down even further. And the deck is finished. Before we go over the deck here, though, I do want to talk about the things that I did not include into the deck because it was actually very hard to cut this down. I guess I'm too used to building 100 card singleton decks where you just have a, so much space. For a 60 card deck here, you don't have a whole lot of space for all the things you want to include. Um, so very simply, I cut a lot of the non-creature spells. And by that, I mean I cut literally all of the non-creature spells. This deck is actually and Umori the Collector Companion deck. I'll go into that a little bit once we start talking about the deck exactly, but because of that, I had to cut a lot of these cards. Um, Extinction Event, I don't think was very good for the deck because it's obviously very creature heavy. Even when we had non-creature spells in it, we were still very creature heavy and we did not want to exile. And all the other strategies that I thought about, we didn't want to exile. Exiling would be very bad for us. Uh, Lead the Stampede and Adventurous Impulse are actually both pretty good in the builds, but I think these kind of things are a little bit more interesting. I also cut some of the more conditional removal, Ivy Elemental because it's a little slow. I think Greater Sandworm could be actually fantastic in one of these builds. Greater Sandworm and Excavation Mole here would actually be really good in a build that involved these cards up here on top that involved good old Space Godzilla and Void Beckoner because these cards all cycle. They are big, beefy cards that cycle, except for Gairuda here. Gairuda is just purely strong. Um, but these cards cycle, and why that is good is because you cycle them, put them in your graveyard, and then you could use them 
to be reanimated with stuff like Eerie Ultimatum, Unbreakable Bond, and Back for More. So I had kind of like a, a weird cycling reanimator build going on, but it didn't really pan out. There's not enough cards to make this deck work, I think. Um, but I think it'd be really cool, you know, cycling your space Godzilla and then bring him back to, you know, insta gib something with him. I think it could be really, really cool. Or cycling all of your stuff and then doing a, an eerie ultimatum and bringing back like a huge host. And then also I should mention because we are running no uh, non-creatures, I had to cut all of the removal. It's a pretty good removal here. So we have like passivisms, dead weight. These actually both synergize very, very well with another card in the deck. Easy Praise, more of a conditional one, but a Cycling, which is pretty good. Dire Tactics, Heartless Act, and Charge of the Forever Beast are actually all really fantastic cards, especially Dire Tactics. But um, because we are doing an all-creature deck, we are not able to run them. I honestly think there's a lot of builds to be had here, but this is the one that I ended up with because I wanted to you know, mess around with the companion mechanic. And honestly, it was a lot easier to um, build just because it was like a more complete deck rather than having like... You know, a little bit of the cycling and a little bit of the reanimation. Um, would have liked to have like a lot more of the reanimation and made something like this um, more, more, more feasible. Um, but I think it could be really cool. It could be really fun. I think there's a making of a really cool commander deck there. So here is the deck I ended up on. It is a Numori the Collector companion deck, which means each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. They are all creatures. As Umora enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. We're going to be choosing creature. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. So basically, he makes all of our other creatures less to cast, which is really important um, because we have a lot of creatures and a lot of mutate cards in the deck. This is kind of like a mutate theme deck. Also, it's a 4-5 legendary ooze for two of any and Golgari, Golgari. Pretty sweet. Obviously, we're running both of the Nathroi Apexes of Death. This is kind of like the big finisher of the deck, and I think it really pulls it all together. The fact that we got two makes it... Really sweet. What does Nathroi do? Well, he is a five drop, two of any, white, black, green, legendary creature, cat, nightmare, beast, the apex of death. His mutate cost is pretty hefty. It's four and then a green or a white, and then black, black. So his mutate cost is seven, but if you can get that off, whenever he mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total cost 10, or total power, rather, 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you can bring a bunch of stuff back from the battlefield. I still considered running stuff like um, Space Godzilla in this build, but the 10 power thing, it, I think it's kind of cooler to get a bunch of guys rather than just like a Space Godzilla. It's, I still think it could work out though. Um, he also has Death Touch and Lifelink. So if you just play him for five and then mutate something on top of him, um, get that trigger and then also, you know, get a five, five Death Touch Lifelink. Pretty good. Um, so those are kind of like the big spicy cards of the deck. We have some other ones in here too, but let's talk about like what, what brings it all together. So we have Mysterious Egg. This is a creature that we want to mutate onto. It's just a 0-2 for one. It's an egg. Whenever this creature mutates, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So we're running four of those. We also have the Almighty Brushwag, another creature we want to mutate onto. It's a 1-1 one -one for one with Trample. Pay three of any and a green, and it gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. We want a lot of really low cost mutate cards. We can play them early and then mutate onto them as soon as possible. So I'm running three of the Brushwag, and then the only Zagoth Mamba that we got, which is a 1-1 one, one Nightmare Snake for one black. And whenever it mutates, another target creature your opponent controls gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Pretty sweet. If we had more of these, we probably would have ran them. Um, but as it stands, we just have kind of eight of the really low cost mutate targets, you know. Pretty good. Not too bad. Um, next up, we have some ramp. We have the Humble Naturalist, one of the only humans in the deck. So you cannot mutate onto this. You have to mutate onto a non-human card. It's just a 1-3 for one of any and a green. Human Druid, add one mana of any color. Spend this to only cast a creature spell. And you know what? We're running all creatures. So this card is actually pretty good. Next up, we have the Skull Prophet. Very similar. He's a 3-1 Human Druid for a black and a green. You can tap him to add a black or a green and also tap him to add the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Not too bad. I think I'd rather run these over the Humble Naturalists if you had them, but you know, he's uncommon, so I only had one of them. Next up is Luris of the Dream Den. This card isn't quite as good in this build as in other builds because if we were running non-creature spells like... I don't know. Let's see. What was really good with him? Oh, yeah. Pacifism. Pacifism and Deadweight are both really, really good with Luris because Luris lets you cast permanence with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard each turn. 
It's a 3-2 cat nightmare for one of any, and then a black or white or an, and a black or white. It's a companion. We're not doing the whole companion thing with Luris. Lifelink. During each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. Yeah, pretty good. Still works in this deck. We can still get some of our mutate targets back, which is why I think it's still really good in the deck. Because late game, if we still need a mutate target, you know, we can play Luris and then immediately play like a Mysterious Egg. So we don't have to put everything down onto Luris, which I still think is quite good. Similarly, we have Necro Panther. It is a cat nightmare, 3-3 three, three for one at white and a black as a mutate of two of any and then a hybrid white-black, hybrid white-black. Whenever this creature mutates, return target creature card with converted mana cost Converted mana. Converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So we get, you know, our Luris back, any of those other creatures we talked about, and some of the other ones that we're going to talk about. Like Farfinder here. I'm running three Farfinders instead of four because it's kind of like a, a slow card, and it's not hugely impactful, but it lets us ramp. It is a three-drop 1-1 one, one with Vigilance. It's a cute little fox. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Well, it kind of doesn't ramp. It just draws us a land. Still not too bad, and it's a pretty good target to mutate onto because it's, you know, one with, with Vigilance. Next up, we have a really good mutate target. This is a 1-3 Bird Goat with Flying for two of any and a white, so it's just a three drop. It says, if non-combat damage we dealt to Stormwind Cap Rider, prevent that damage, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each one damage prevented this way. This is a really good card to mutate onto because it kind of protects itself, and it also has Flying, and it's a 1-3, so you can mutate something big onto this, you know, it'll still have the flying and it'll still have that ability to protect itself, which I think is quite good. Next up is Grim Dancer. This card is solely in here as a mutate target. It is a 3-3 for one black black nightmare. Grim Dancer enters the battlefield with your choice of two different counters from among Menace, Death Touch, and Lifelink. Pretty good. Has a lot of keywords on it and it retains those when it mutates, which is pretty sweet. Next up, we have the Insatiable Hemophage. This is a 3-3 three, three creature nightmare for three of any and a black. It has a mutate of two of any and a black, so it's less than its cost, which is pretty good. Death Touch. Whenever this creature mutates, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. It's not the most impactful card, but I still think it's worth running in this deck, and it has Death Touch, which is pretty sweet. Next up, we have Gem Razor. This is a 4-4 four, four for three of any and a green. Mutate one green green with reach and trample. And when it mutates, destroy an artifact or an enchantment opponent control. Just a really solid all-around card. Pretty good body, reach, trample, and has a relevant effect. Next up is Cub Warden. 3-5 mutate for two of any double white. And its regular cost is three of any and a white. So it's a four drop either way. It has a lifelink. And it says whenever this creature mutates, create two 1-1 one, one cats with lifelink. Yeah, pretty sweet. I like it. Next up, we have Bone Lurker, one of my favorite cards in the set. This is a 4-4 Nightmare Beast for two of any green black. It also has a mutate of two of any and then a hybrid Golgari, hybrid Golgari. And then it also mutates for two of any and a hybrid Golgari, hybrid Golgari. Whenever this creature mutates, return a permanent from your graveyard to your hand. Really, really sweet. And you know what? Everything on our deck is a permanent. So yeah, really good. Next up, we have three Migratory Great Horns. This is a uh, mutate creature that lets us ramp, which is pretty sweet. It's a 3-4 beast for three of any and a green. It has a mutate of two of any and a green, which, once again, less than its cost, which is pretty good. And whenever it mutates, search your library for a basic land card, and you put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Really, really good card. If we had another one of these, I think we would probably run it. I think we only got these three, though. Next up, we are running our Luminous Broodmoth, because of course we are. This card's amazing. It's a 3-4 flyer for two of any double white. Whenever creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it. And as if you noticed, none of our creatures have flying, so they're all going to come back. Next up is the Auspicious Sterix. This card's really sweet in this deck. It's a 6-6 six, six for four of any and a green. So 6-6 six, six for five is not too bad. It has a mutate of five of any and a green. And it says, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanents, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated, put those permanents onto the battlefield. Yeah, this is sick. You can get some really sweet stuff. In any build of this deck, I would run this auspicious Sterics. You can just get all of your big sweet stuff. Speaking of which, we have Chittering Harvester. Uh, we are running two of these because this is how many we had in the box. It is a 4-6 Nightmare um, for five of any and a black. It has a mutate of four of any and a black, and whenever it mutates, each opponent sacrifices a creature. One of the only removals we have 
in the deck, but we, we don't really want to worry about removing enemies all that much. We just want to build up a bunch of big monsters and just, just smash them. Just smash them in and then like overcome them with value. And then finally, we just have the lands. I kind of threw the lands together with just whatever we had. So, you know, we got Evolving Wilds. We got the Savai Triome because it adds uh, black or white. We have the Bonders Enclave. It's kind of a greedy one for this deck because we're running three colors and not a lot of fixing. And then I also run all of the tap lands that came in the box. And then, you know, we got your basics. Um, not too exciting here. I am running 23 lands. This deck that's probably okay at 23 lands because we have a decent amount of ramp in here. And that was my Ikoria Layer of Behemoths deck in a box. My very first Magic the Gathering deck in a box. It was a little bit harder than I thought because there's just so many cards to go over and I'm so used to building like 100 card decks. It was really hard to cut this down and make it consistent. It's just kind of like a, like a big old draft deck basically. I've made a draft deck very similar to this that did pretty well. In any case, let me know what kind of deck you would have built in the comments down below. Maybe you would have gone for, you know, that reanimator build. Maybe you would have done something entirely different. We did have some other, like, pretty good removal, like the ram throughs here. I'm trying to grab these off screen. And the, uh, the blood curdles aren't too bad. You know, we had some other, like, decent rares, like, um, let's see. We had, like, Luca. We had Keenan. Though, I don't know. Keenan could have been interesting in here. As well as, like, we got one of each of all of the ultimatums, too. I didn't mention that, you know, during the video, but we did get one of each of all of the ultimatums. We got these ones and then the other one, which I had set somewhere. Yeah, there we go. The Eerie Ultimatum. Yeah, one of each. Very interesting. And, of course, we can't forget about Space Godzilla, the Death Corona. Anyway, I've rambled long enough. Like, comment, subscribe. Maybe check out my Patreon. Check me out on Twitter, on Facebook, all that crap. Regardless of what you do, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time for some more card game content.